we will defend not just our terms and conditions, but our communities too. Because these cuts are unnecessary. There is an alternative based in tax justice, job creation and investment. And the austerity programme, of which the attack on pensions is a part, is a disaster for the vast amount of people in this country. It means unemployment is up to 2.6 million. It means youth unemployment is up to 1 million. It means pay freezes for us, where the richest 1% stuff their bank accounts with obscene, unearned wealth. It's about the biggest transfer of wealth and power in history through a privatisation programme that means the end of free education and free health. And we saw what happened in Greece when Papandreou dared to suggest that the people should be consulted on the cuts programme there. And the cuts and privatisation programme in this country too is also a fundamental attack on democracy. No one voted for these cuts and only the multi-millionaires will benefit from them. So we have to be clear about this. The problem is not that they're cutting too fast and cutting too deep. The problem is that they are cutting at all. This government... This government... This government has no mandate for these cuts and they're being carried out on behalf of a tiny elite at the expense of the overwhelming majority. And who is it that's carrying out these attacks? What a shower! David Cameron, an obscenely rich ex-advertising executive with a personal fortune of £68 million. That is Francis Maud. This is the man who was caught fiddling his expenses to claim for one of his four homes. And then there's the tax-dodging Chancellor, George Osborne. Then there's Nick Clegg, another wealthy con man and professional liar. And finally, and finally, that there's the biggest strip in British politics, Danny Alexander. Many of these people are simply unfit to hold public office. They have no moral authority. They're devoid of any decency or loyalty, other than to the bankers and the big business backers who bankroll them and who will see them all right when they are kicked out of office. attack on pensions. Public sector pensions are affordable, they're sustainable and they're actually falling in cost. Both, they're only low pay. Pensions are only deferred wages and low pay means low pensions. The average civil service a pension after full service is only £80 a week. Hardly gold plated, hardly a fortune. The truth is this, these people want us to endure a lifetime of low pay, followed by an impoverished old age. They are beneath contempt. They are sought to divide public and private sector workers. But the reality is, and you won't see this in the pages of the Daily Mail, is that public sector pensions are actually comparable in cost to public city, private city, public sector pensions. The real truth is that millions of public sector workers have had their pensions stolen from them. And while the government complain, it, it, it claims to support the private sector, the reality is public spending cuts are cutting just as many, if not more, jobs in the private sector. For every job that goes in the public sector, at least one and probably two will go in the private sector. But we must speak out loud and clear for public services. Let's be clear, public sector spending is not a debt, it is an investment in people. It's an investment in, in communities and it's an investment in services. And when, and when, when rich Tory ministers talk about fairness between public and private sector pensions, what they really need is a race to the bottom. They want to impose on us the worst pensions they possibly can. And that is why our slogan is fair pensions for all. Yes, we are fighting to defend our own terms and conditions. But we're also fighting for decent state pensions. It is an obscenity that the state pension is £102 a week, while the poverty levels are £170 a week. And that is why we must stand together to defeat this attack. The real division 
and societies not between public sector and private sector workers. The real division is between the haves and the haves not. The real division is, between, is not between, is between, public, is between working people, the overwhelming majority, and the tiny elite of spivs and gangsters who have never done an honest day's work in their life. fortunes by gambling in the stock exchange and privatising our services. That is not socially, socially useful work, it is legalised theft. And the real division is between those who believe society should be run for the people and those who believe that society should be run for profit. But the truth, the truth is this, that they couldn't get away with it if it were not for the fact that the Labour Party is committed to protecting corporate interests of the billionaires rather than representing working people. Ed Miliband said he cannot support this strike. Well, we have a message for Ed Miliband. You're a disgrace. We will never, we will never, ever, we will never, ever forgive your craven toading to the bankers and to the Tory press. I will never forgive your treachery. If the main political parties in this country are incapable of representing the interests of the vast majority, then maybe it's time we've done it ourselves. <laughs> we, will use, we will use all campaigning methods to defeat these attacks. We will oppose them in the courts. We will organise in the workplace. But we must also organise in our communities too. And I would urge everybody here today to support not just your trade union, but also support the Bristol Anti-Cuts Alliance, or the Anti-Cuts Alliance in your own hometown. If you don't have an Anti-Cuts Alliance in your own hometown, well, set one up. We give full support and solidarity to the pensioners alliance, to the students, to the school students, and to the Occupy movement. And we do so because this government has targeted the most vulnerable in society to bear the burden of the cuts. Women, children, the unemployed, the sick and the disabled. And that's why we must win this battle. After this brilliant show of strength and solidarity, we must prepare for further action if the government does not concede. My union, PCS, believes that the, trade, the TUC must announce at its upcoming meeting as an absolute minimum at the organisation of another National Day of Action involving all the unions in strike today early in 2012, but we can escalate this dispute by getting even more unions on board, including those private sector workers fighting for their pension rights too. All targeted, selective and rolling action taken by individual unions must be coordinated by the TUC for maximum impact. But the way to win is to demonstrate our power of we have, as we have done so today, striking together, standing together. national. Coordinated industrial action is the key to defeating the attack on pensions and the cuts themselves. Let me say in conclusion, today we have found our voice. Let us make sure they hear us. Because you know what? We are better than them. Let's have confidence in the justice of our case. Let's have confidence in our collective power. Let's stick together. We will win and if we, if we can win and if we stick together, we will win. Thank you.